tell us a story. Yes, tell, tell us, us a story. story. All righty, we have finished our day. We stayed over to post some thank you videos, and I really appreciate it. Of course, by the time you see this, it'll be long gone, but it was the 100th subscriber, and I still giggled that I could even get 100 people to watch my stuff, but I greatly appreciate it. Like I said, it, it is for me. I enjoy it, and getting out and about is better than the alternative to what I was having. So, I thank you all again. We're uh, going to get home. We're going to let the gopher warm up because it is awful chilly out there. I was having a uh, conversation back and forth with Matt uh, about a propane... Uh, propane powered vehicles and stuff and he was mentioning about there's a kit out there for propane on a motorcycle uh, I find that that would be really cool uh, back in the day <laughs> back in the uh, early 70s when I worked at the uh, a dealership Hopkins Chevy Oles we used to convert uh, propane vehicles over to uh, vehicles over to propane for fleet and uh, delivery vehicles uh, big trucks and, and or cars the biggest problem that we had was mounting the canisters. Uh, they were the cylindrical tubes really reinforced. Um, some of the trucks would have them uh, right behind the cab, just inside the bed, and take up about a foot and a half. The cars uh, uh, would have them. Uh, a lot of times would be two or three smaller tubes linked together with a manifold, uh, a diaphragm release and a manifold that were laying under where the regular gas tank went under the trunk. Um, you never really could get a lot of fuel in them, but they, they did pretty good. Um, mileage was was good, but it, it, it wasn't a constant thing like a, a, a vehicle. You usually kind of know you go this distance and you're going to use the fuel. On the propane, you didn't use as much, but the tanks didn't last as long or as easily refillable as the gasoline was. So we had several interest in instances with uh, lines breaking and people becoming injured and things. Uh, you had to use the real high gauge uh, braided uh, line. Uh, you couldn't use the fixed line, or we found that we couldn't use the fixed line that they uh, would supply with it. We had to go with a higher gauge braided uh, line with rubber uh, on it. Uh, the fixed lines tended to contract and move and vibrate too much, and, and they would crack and leak. Uh, we did have a couple instances where almost pro they were almost empty propane canisters uh, were damaged. Uh, were dropped and the ends were damaged and they did become projectiles but they were almost empty there was very very little uh, actual uh, uh, liquid propane left in it and uh, there's mostly just a little bit of pressure and, uh, and uh, but they still did damage to the building when they went down um, they were supposed to be mounted into a cage to be filled and when you go to mount them in the cage of course they're outside the cage you have to put them in the cage to fill them as it was being put into the cage it toppled over and sheared off the valve and it, it did go through a concrete wall <laughs> a concrete block wall similar to the building that's in front of me at the base of it and it put it uh, was one of the smaller canisters so it was only like an eight inch nine inch uh circumference he just punched a nice clean hole right into the block uh, it did go into the other shop but it didn't really do any damage um, luckily like I said it was full of propane still had the smell and uh, well there was a lot more smell than that from the individuals that were standing really close to it from what I understand it uh, scared the uh, poop right out of them um, I've seen uh, other canisters fall over uh, bottle gas canisters and stuff or welding or argon gas canisters fall over and get the top sheared off of them that's why the first thing you need to do before you move them is screw on those safety caps and the last thing you do before you fill them up is is take that safety cap off after it's in the cage to be filled once it's filled you screw that safety cap right back on before you ever move it out of that cage but you know how it is same way with a safety uh, 
guards and cages on every machine that I've ever seen and worked at, corporations, companies, printing presses. They took, for one of the first things they do is they take off the, the guards as soon as they get the machines. So anyway, that just brought that back to memory on, on the, uh, the propane. I would really like to see uh, Matthew Charrington build one of those. I, find, I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, even better, even better would be if he could do it on a trike. <laughs> but you know how I am. So, all righty, she's warm now. We've got some heat coming in the cab. We're going to get home. Let's ride. individual that wanted to uh, drive in his side and my side at the same time but uh, we're here we're gonna go in and get some rest hopefully get up tomorrow and start all over again thanks guys see ya story time is over damn that was annoying <laughs> <laughs>